Hello, and welcome to the Love Your Work Life podcast. I'm your host, Elisa Shuck. Whether you're going for that next promotion, looking for a job, or making a career pivot, I'll teach you how to navigate it all so you can have the career you want. Welcome to Love Your Work Life, episode 102. I was inspired this week by a quote from Oprah. Here's what it is. I've come to believe that each of us has a personal calling that's as unique as a fingerprint and that the best way to succeed is to discover what you love and find a way to offer it to others in the form of service, working hard, and also allowing the energy of the universe to lead you. Now, I'll be perfectly honest. I have a little bit of a love, hate, maybe hate is kind of a strong word, relationship with this sort of quote, partly because for most of us, it represents contrast. And what I mean by that is sometimes it can inspire. Other times it might actually remind you that you're not living your personal calling, that there's something missing. If a quote like this has you feeling a little alienated because there's so much out there, there's so much you want to do, then you are in the right place because I do want you to achieve your full potential. I do want you to achieve your full purpose. But maybe it's better said that you could achieve everything you envision in your life by combining purpose and potential. Let's go back to the quote. How do you discover this personal calling, this purpose in your life? What do you love about what you do? Now, if you're stuck in a job that you feel like you've hit a ceiling or there's some toxic behavior going on there, it can be a little challenging to uncover what you love. I totally get that. But here are some things to think about to help you get back to that. The first thing is practical. This is the actual doing of the work, the things that are part of your day to day. What do you actually do that you enjoy or that you love in the hands-on part, the tasks, okay? Then take practical, a little more granular, and think about it from a tactical perspective. Small actions serving larger purposes. What are the small actions that you're taking, practically speaking, that serve a larger purpose in your role? Maybe those are the little communications that you're having. Maybe that's a literal process in software development or engineering or project management or product design, the tactical. Those are those little things that you do that are often overlooked because we're so focused on the big stuff, right? Kind of the way we're trained, big things, big growth, big expansion, but that only happens because of those little actions that you're doing day to day that serve the larger purpose. Now, the larger purpose can be uncovered when you think about the strategic things that you like or love about what you do. Strategic is the overall interest and the means to an end. Those larger purposes that are served. What is the vision of the company? What is the vision that you have for yourself? What is the vision of the team? Is your team a means to an end for the company? A means to an end for people outside of your company? Boy, you could go super, super deep with all of these questions. How about the relational and interpersonal nature 
about what you're doing. This is another way to discover what you love about your career, what you love about your job. The relational interpersonal are the people interactions and connections. Now, I'll be transparent with you. There was a time when I was working in a very toxic environment, and the only thing that was keeping me there were those relational, interpersonal people interactions and connections. My team was a big, big part of that. Another part of it, I would take back to strategic. It was a business model that helped other people create entrepreneurial opportunities for themselves, help them take control of their finances, help them take control and add revenue in a way that was 100% in their control. Those two things were things I really loved and they kept me going. They kept me working hard. It was the lifeline that I was holding on to despite the fact that I was in an environment that was very trying and challenging. That's why I want you to uncover what you love about what you do through this practical, tactical, strategic, and relational plus interpersonal perspective because these are the things that travel with you. The things you love practically, tactically, strategically, and relationally will be things you love in your next gig. They will be clues for you about what you might pursue in your next gig because you can take all these things you love and plug them into a new context, which is the perfect segue to offer what you love to others, serve others, find a form to deliver what you love practically, tactically, strategically, relationally. There is an interview question that I always, always, always suggest that you ask. My clients in our one-on-ones and in my Stellar Interviews course, I go in deep into this, but the interview questions that you ask are so powerful because it's your opportunity to showcase more of what you're about. This one interview question is my favorite, and it actually works the same way when you ask it of yourself internally. It will give you more answers about what you're about. And the question is this, who are the people who are depending on this role for their success? Now, you can imagine asking this in an interview will really wow the people that you're talking with because they now see that you're thinking beyond just yourself. When you ask this question of yourself, you're also thinking beyond yourself. You're also starting to uncover the way you offer what you love and what form it can take. So turn the question around a little bit. Who are the people who are depending on me for their success? Who are the people who are depending on me for their experience? So powerful. Because when you are looking for the service to others component, it doesn't really matter what role you're in or even what level you are in your career. Because everything you do has a ripple effect to someone else or something else. Who are the people depending on you? This will help you understand how what you do, even in the tiniest of ways, affects someone else. I think about all the years I traveled and all of the people I encountered in those travels, directly and indirectly. And indirectly could have been the person who was cleaning my hotel room, who was giving me that great experience when I walked in and had a fresh smelling room and crisp, clean linens 
all of that, that person who was offering their level of excellence, their attention to detail, their way of affecting my experience meant they were offering something. When you're thinking about how the things you do flow out to other people, it can be internally inside your organization, or it can be the things you do help your organization run smoothly and profitably so that you all as an organization can keep delivering to the people who buy your products, engage your brand. This has infinite possibilities. This is why discovering what you love and understanding how you're already offering it in some way, shape, or form as a service to other people is so powerful. Now that you've discovered what you love and how what you do is serving others, now you can find these things in anything you choose to do. And like I mentioned in my own experience, this is how you can find something you love and something of service, even in a toxic environment. It's how you can create challenge for yourself in a job that you've outgrown. Getting in touch with discovering what you love and discovering how it serves others is your way of saying, hey, these are the qualities that I'm going to take with me anywhere I choose to go. And listen, my friend, you have choices. You absolutely do. You may feel stuck. You may feel like the value you're delivering isn't aligned with the value you're receiving monetarily or intangibly. But knowing these things about yourself, the things that you understand about what works and how you're already serving will open up your eyes to new ways and new places that you can love your work life and serve other people, no matter where you are. And I really hope that it gives you the courage to see the possibility in something else. Because like I said, I want you to achieve your full potential. I want you to achieve your full purpose. And because part of life is growth and expansion, then you've got to go for that too. And listen, it's a lot easier than you might think once you give yourself the opportunities to see yourself in those other roles. Find your purpose. Revisit your purpose. Reignite your purpose. I'll talk to you next time. Here's the thing. You are going to work 90,000 hours in your lifetime. That's 30% of your life. And for some of you, it's probably even more than that. So you might as well take control of it. Learn the skills you need to learn. Get the professional development resources you need to excel and deliver and have impact. That's what my membership, Control Your Career, is all about. Join for $20 a month or $197 a year. If you want VIP treatment, you can get access to that too. The bottom line is I want you to have all the resources you need to create a thriving career anytime you want. And when you hit some blocks, then I'm going to give you some things on how to survive too. Week after week, month after month, inside Control Your Career. Go to elisashuck-careercoach.com forward slash control-your-career. I will see you there. I will see.